Hello there. This is the family doctor. put my instrument case. Maybe in the car. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Well, I guess I'll go home for lunch today. It isn't often oh, I get it. Doctor Adams. Who's that? Oh, oh Miss Malloy. How do you do, Miss Malloy? Oh, Doctor Adams, are you going my way? Well, now, well, I don't know which way are you going. Oh, I'm going down to my studio. I have a class this afternoon. They're such smart youngsters. I just love every one of them. Did you say you were going in the direction of my studio? Well, which direction is your studio, Miss Malloy? Oh, how stupid of me. Of course you wouldn't know. You've never been there, have you? No. Well, it's right down Maple Street, and turn to your right a half block at Cypress. Here, I'll show you. Just you go down Maple Street, Doctor. (laughs) Wait, I'll close the door. (laughs) There, now. Now we're ready, aren't we? Hmm. Yes, yes, so it seems. Uh, you haven't heard any of my pupils, have you, Dr. Adams? No, I haven't. Oh, they're just doing beautifully. Every one of them. <gasps> my, such talent for a town this size. I have them working now on a little one-act play of my own. As soon as they're able to master that, I'm going to get them started on something a little heavier. Say, uh, oh, Macbeth or Hamlet or oh, Othello. Yes, uh, that would be slightly heavier. Yes, I think so. And then uh, next New Year's Day, if I'm here that long in your lovely little town, I want to present a pageant, a pageant of the passing year with all its doubts and fears and trials and tribulations and worries and all, giving way to the hopes and happiness and gladsome days of the future. Don't you think so? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, of course. All personified by the boys and girls of my classes, sort of an allegory, as it were. Oh, well, here we are. And thank you so much, Dr. Adams. It was more than sweet of you to bring me down here. Uh, won't you come in for a few moments and hear the children? Oh, I, I think not, thank you. I... Oh, just for a few moments. Oh, the children will love it. They think so much of their dear Dr. Adams. Please, Doctor. Well, I was just on my now, way Now, to... now, now, now. I simply will not take no for an answer. You won't, eh? No. Oh, it will mean so much to the children. Oh, no, Doctor, you must come in. Well, all right, then. Oh, that's too sweet of you. Come along. I'm sure they're all just pacing the floor with anxiety to begin rehearsing. They just look forward with so much anticipation to every Saturday afternoon. But, uh, oh, here we are. Now, oh, I just want to show you how enthusiastic they are. Come right into the studio, Dr. Adams. Oh, thank you. Good afternoon, boys. At... Oh, how do you do, Ella Mary? How do you, Miss Malloy? The uh, other pupils haven't arrived as yet, I take it? No, not yet. Well, that's too bad. A little disappointing, isn't it, Doctor? Oh, no, I don't mind at all. There are uh, Well, probably... we shan't mind, shall we, Ella Mary? Oh, pardon me. Uh, you know Ella Mary Bliss, of course, don't you, Dr. Adams? Well, I ought to. I saw her to help bring Ella Mary into the world. Really? A small world, isn't it? Well, uh, Ella Mary, suppose we begin with your recitation. Me? Of course. Dr. Adams has come all the way from Holgate Street just to hear you. Haven't you, Dr. Adams? Hmm? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Well, just sit down there, Doctor. That's quite a comfortable chair. It's a little worn around the edges, but it's still serviceable. (laughs) 
All right, Ellen Mary, Dr. Adams is ready. Suppose we begin with your entrance. Now, Doctor, I'm tragedy, born of war and pestilence. Of course, I don't do it in the play. It's to be played by one of the boys. Uh, I understand. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's your cue, Ellen Mary. Let me see whether I can find it. I had it just here for a moment ago. So. Oh, yes, yes, here it is. <clears throat> I, tragedy, gloat over the world. Grief is my long speech ending with, uh, Look, who is this fair maid, clothed all in white? Ah, such radiance shines from her pure face. My eyes cannot bear to see such light. All right, Ella Mary. Yes, I know. <clears throat> Behold, I transform cowards into the bravest of the brave. I wield my power, and men with souls of pygmies become as giants. My love doth encompass all who behold me and listen to my story. I know no fear, no hate, nor malice, nor greed. Love is my philosophy and peace, peace of mind and soul, my goal. Thy name, maiden, tell us thy name. My name? When thou dost hear it, thou wilt never more fear me. Behold, I am tolerance. Oh, fine, Ella Mary, that's just lovely. Don't you think so, Doctor? Hmm. You say you, you say you wrote that play, Miss Malloy? Why, yes, do you like it? Well, of course, I haven't heard the rest, but I think that one speech is beautifully written, and it has a sound, solid message in it. Oh, Doctor, do you really think so? I do. Someday I'd like to get a copy of that and, and just jot it down in my notebook. I make a collection of these little bits of wisdom, and I'd like to have that. Oh, Dr. Adams, you make me very happy. Here, you shall have this manuscript, and then you can read the rest of the play. Oh, no, no, I... Uh, oh, yes, I want you to have it. I'm so sorry the other pupils aren't here to do the rest of the play for you. It's so much more effective in dialogue. I wonder where they can be. Oh, Miss Beloy, I know where they are. You do? Well, where? Are they down at the Bayou Theater? At the... Well, what in the world are they doing down there? Don't they know we have our long rehearsal this afternoon? Can't they go to a picture show in the evening? Oh, it isn't a movie. It isn't? Well, what is it? It's a real show with real live actors and actresses. Well, really? Well, isn't that strange that I didn't hear about it? <laughs> well, of course, I'm so busy with my little flock, Doctor, that I, uh... uh... What's the name of the play, Ella Mary? It's called The Sheriff's Son to the Rescue or The Revenge Perfect. Mm, it sounds rather trashy. Oh, but with Mr. Malay in it, it couldn't be trashy. Well, perhaps not, but I got... What did you say, Mr. Who? Malay. Francois Malay. Oh, he was here a couple of months ago, and he was just grand. All the kids thought you wouldn't mind because it would be just like learning something from you, Miss Malloy. Oh, Malay. Malloy. Isn't that funny? <laughs> yes, isn't it? Dr. Adams, would you mind driving me down to the Bijou Theater? I think I'd like to see the sheriff's son to the rescue. I might learn something new about the theater myself. <laughs> Never mind now, Doctor. You stay right here. I want a witness to what I'm going to say to that... That... Well, I want a witness. But, Miss Malloy, I'm a physician. I have a practice to... Doctor, I'll not take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. So you said before. All right, I'll stay there. Yes, and this time I mean it more than ever. That ham. Wait till I get my hands on him. (laughs) Crunch. Let's see. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Malay. Good afternoon. Oh, hello, Teddy. Theodosia to you, you lug. Now, Teddy, let's let's talk this over in my dressing Lead room. Lead me to it. I've got a lot to say, and I don't want any interruptions. Come on, Doctor. Oh, now, I... Uh... Come on, I said. Well, very well. Nice performance this afternoon, Francois. See you tonight. Well, uh, I hope so. Come on. Where's the dressing room with the big gold star? Right here, my sweet. Go ahead. Sit down, Dr. Adams. Sit down, Frank. I don't think you'll be able to take this standing. Well, my fine feathered friend, a nice mess of potash you've got yourself into. Now, Teddy. Don't you teddy me, you ham. I've chased you all over these 48 United States, and I'm sick of it. I finally got stuck here in this funny little burg because I ran out of money. The money you were supposed to send me. Ha! 
Money. You leaving me out there in Hollywood with a lot of unpaid bills. Rent on an apartment we couldn't afford anyway. Furniture that was only half paid for. Now, darling, oh, that's I'm not, not through all yet. Not a line have I heard from you. I finally I found out you changed power. your name from Frank O'Malley to Francois Malay. So I kept right up with you. I, I changed mine to Malloy. Not as fancy as yours, but it did the trick. I finally caught up. I know. Dr. Adams, what in the world are you reading? Oh, uh, I was just reading a speech from your play. Well, you have to read it out loud? I... No, I guess... You were reading... What? Well, the, the speech uh, that Ella Mary gave this afternoon. You remember? Tolerance. Tolerance. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember. <laughs> my love doth encompass all who behold me and listen to my story. I know no fear, nor hate, nor malice, nor greed. Love is my philosophy, and peace, peace of mind and soul, my goal. Yes, that's it. Tolerance. Oh, no, honey, don't <laughs> cry. It's all right. I deserve every bit of the lashing you were giving me, and more. Yes, I know what a rotter I've been. And I promise I'll change, Teddy. I I wish you wouldn't cry. Oh. Oh, Frank. You don't know how much I've longed for you. It wasn't the money. I didn't care about the debt. I just wanted you. Oh, it's all right now, honey. I'm going to stick by you from now on. I thought I wanted to get away, but... But I was mistaken. I... I've missed you, too. Have you, Frank? Oh, you big... You big... Ham. Yes, ham. Don't you ever leave me again. Don't worry, darling. I won't. Oh, Dr. Adams, you think we're awfully silly to... Oh, Frank, he's gone. When did he go? Hmm, he must have slipped out without our noticing him. Gee, Frank, he's a swell person. They're all grand people in Cedarton. I wish we could stay in this, in this... Funny little burg? Yes. Well, why not? Frank, do you mean it? Sure. We could start a little theater. The folks here would go for it like hotcakes. We'll start a club, have members, give them all chances to play in real shows. Oh, that's swell. Yeah. Frank. Yeah? Let's be just Mr. and Mrs. O'Malley. Huh? What do you say? I say swell. <laughs> This is the family doctor. I'll be in to see you again right soon. Goodbye. <laughs>